All right, folks, we're here back again with In the Field with the UK Extension. I'm Adam Huber, this is Jason Phillips. And Jason, today we're gonna to talk about a topic that a lot of homeowners uh, ask us, uh, and we get this question all year round, and that is mold control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, moles are active throughout the year. And uh, throughout the year, we get a lot of questions about moles. You know, they can make for uh, unsightly tunnels throughout throughout your yard, like the one we've got in front of us here. Um, so a lot of homeowners don't like that. Also, they can make for uneven walking and treacherous walking. Um, and in general, they're just a nuisance that uh, homeowners want to get rid of. Right, right. Yeah, you definitely don't want to be walking through your yard and trip over a mole hole and break your ankle or, right. or you know, that would be, that'd be a bad, bad deal there. And here we are in January, and this is actually a brand new tunnel. Right. Um, so, obviously, they're, they're active 12 months out of the year. Yeah, yeah. And so, Jason, uh, as far as the, the mole tunnels go, how do you go about determining if, if this tunnel here is active? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the main thing when we're going to go. So I've got a couple products with me today. Uh, there's a lot of products if you go to your local hardware store that you're going to see to, uh, to kill moles, to deter moles, traps, uh, just tons of different things that you can choose from. Um, and over the past several years, we have seen, based on clientele response, and uh, research through the university that uh, these worms and grubs are very effective. And so we've got two different packs here, the Matomco, and we're not advocating that brand. Uh, Tomcat Mole Killer makes one, Taliprid makes one. There's several different ones uh, available on the market, but the most, most of them uh, have the same active ingredient. Uh, so they're basically the same, the same product. Right. And that would be bromethylin. But uh, back to your original question. So what we need to do in order to determine if this is an active tunnel um, is we're gonna push that down when the ground is wet or moist or soft and come back 48 to 72 hours later. And if that tunnel is pushed up, then we know that that's an active tunnel because moles will make tunnels that they never use again. Right. And obviously if we bait those tunnels, it's going to do is we're wasting money and our time and it's just, we're, we're not, not going to have success. We're not going to get, get our problem solved. Right. But uh, if we do identify that it is an active tunnel, then that's where we're going to focus our efforts. Right. And I see you brought some uh, accessories along. Today. Sure. Uh, kind of explain what the flags and the, and the gloves and okay. the are for. Well, you know, you can have several tunnels in your lawn, and so you could end up mashing those tunnels down in right. several places. And uh, what we need is a way to go back to where we have mashed that tunnel down, exactly where we've mashed it down to identify if it's raised back up or not. So I've just got some survey flags. These are available at your local hardware store. As we push this down, we're just gonna put a flag beside of it to indicate that this is one area that we've, that we've pushed down. And also, um, always read the label with any product that you use. And per the label, we are uh, supposed to wear gloves. So we're gonna do that. I've got some latex gloves with me today. And of course, what these actually are, are uh, earthworms or grubs that are coated in, in some, a little bit of poison. Right. So as far as your flags go, would you recommend putting a flag, say right here and then going 10 or 15 feet down and putting another flag to kind of determine? Sure, uh, well we typically don't recommend putting flags if you've got a lot of tunnels um, over three feet apart. Now, this is an individual run, so we could probably only put a couple flags along this run because it's pretty clear this is one run, but we've identified some others too. Uh, that we definitely want to uh, take right. a look at and see right. if those are active tunnels right. as well. Okay, okay. Uh, well, do you want to go ahead and demonstrate how to actually flag the tunnel and uh, put our bait in? The sure. Yeah. Okay. So basically, we see here that we've got a that we've got a tunnel, and we want to identify first and foremost if this is an active tunnel. So what we're going to do is we're going to come out here, and we're going to mash this tunnel down flat, or as far as we can like so and because we mashed it down right there we're going to place a survey flag so that we can come back to that location okay 
Now we're gonna do this in several locations throughout the lawn, especially if you can identify that there's different tunnels. And we'll come back 48 to 72 hours later to see if this is pushed back up, if this is raised back up like the rest of the run, then you know that this is an active tunnel and this is one in which we wanna to target to, uh, to try to to try to alleviate our mole problem. So, for our video purposing today, purposes today, um, we're gonna say that this tunnel was raised back up. So we've come back 48 to 72 hours later. The tunnel is raised back up, so we know this is an active run. So what we're gonna do next is um, we're gonna put our put our gloves on per the label. So we'll go ahead and do that. We know we're in the right location because we've come back to our marker flag. The earthworms come in packets like this. We want to put our gloves on first before we open the packet. Open it up, or before we handle any of the worms. Open it up. There's two per packet. Now the label calls for, calls for one per placement. So we're going to just pop one of these worms out. Okay, so we've, we've pulled one of the worms out. And uh, now what we're gonna do, we can remove this flag. It served its purpose. So now what I'm gonna do, we're gonna move down to a raised up part because if it were active, it would be raised back up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple fingers and stick my fingers into the tunnel. You can feel the cavity. Once you can feel the cavity, just make a little hole and that's where we're gonna place our worm. So we're going to go ahead and place that down in the tunnel. And now that is baited and ready to ready to go. And the good thing about this is, is that most people think, you know, that they've got tons of moles. Um, but moles are really vigorous feeders and slow to reproduce. So if you kill a couple moles, typically we only have two to three moles per acre, which would surprise most people. But if you kill a couple moles, you've made a big dent in your population. So um, we would place those in several locations throughout the lawn. And, uh, and then you would notice over time, of course, that you're not having any, any new tunnels popping up. And that would indicate that you have, in fact, uh, alleviated your mole problem. Well, folks, we hope that you've enjoyed today's segment of In the Field with UK Extension. Uh, remember, the main thing is, is if you kill it, if you kill a few moles, then you're making a big dent in your population. And, uh, you know, the biggest key is to find those runs that are active and target those with your bait placement. But we've cer we certainly hope that we've helped you to manage your mole problem. Um, and we hope that you found today's video useful and, um, and helpful. Yep. And if you have any other questions concerning moles or mole issues, just contact your local Cooperative Extension Service. Thank you.